Hi, my name's Jo. Um, I've been working with Union Chapel Church as an artist for several years. I wanted to share some information about an artist for Holocaust Memorial Day. So this artist's name is Felix Nussbaum, and he was born in 1904 in Osnabrück, Germany, and he died in Auschwitz um, in 1944 at the age of only 39. His story is quite a tragic one. I'm going to read from an article that's on the Yad Vashem website, written by the chief senior curator, Yehudit Shemgar. And at the same time, I'm going to show you images while I read. So I'm just going to pause the recording for a minute and bring up some, an image of Felix while I read the next section or start reading from the article. So this is a photograph of the artist Felix Nussbaum. And I'm going to read from the article. So, in letters he wrote during the forced exile in Scandinavia, the German playwright Bertolt Brecht complained about the subversive way applied to people like him who had decided to leave Germany upon the Nazi accession to power. The name they coined of emigrants is fundamentally erroneous since this was not a voluntary migration for the purpose of finding an alternative place to settle. The emigrants found themselves not a new homeland, but a place of refuge in exile until the storm passes. Deportees, that's what we are, outcasts. The fate of artist Felix Nussbaum's family from Osnabrück, Germany, substantiates that desperate effort to find shelter and refuge on foreign soil. It is the history of one family among many that found itself in the maelstrom of hopeless flight. And this could be one of the lights in the darkness, so finding a place of refuge. Um, Philip Nussbaum, Felix's father, was a proud German patriot who belonged to the organization of World War I veterans. When the new regime came to power, he had to surrender his membership. And in his parting remarks, he said, for the last time, dear comrades in arms, I salute you as a loyal soldier, and if again I am called to the flag, I am ready and willing. At that time, his son, the artist Felix, was in Rome with a small group of German students at the extension of the Berlin Academy of Arts after winning a prestigious scholarship. In April 1933, Goebbels, Hitler's Minister of Propaganda, visited the artistic elite and lectured them on the Fuhrer's artistic doctrine, which was the Aryan race and heroism are the main themes that the Nazi artist is to develop. Felix understood that there was no place for him as an artist and as a Jew within the confines of this doctrine. He left Rome by early May and the scholarship was revoked a short time later. I'm going to bring up another work um, from around this time. So um, just so tragic how the Nazi regime was affecting artists at the time. And this was summed up in this work um, I'm about to show you called The Great Disaster. So this work, in this work, Felix expressed his intuition concerning the dramatic change that Hitler's secession had wrought, the destruction of Europe and of Western civilization. So Felix's parents, Philip and Rachel, left Osnabrück as did many Jewish inhabitants of this town. His old brother Justus and his family remained to run the family's thriving metal business. After a brief stay in Switzerland, Felix's parents travelled south to meet with their beloved son in Rapallo, a fishing town on the Italian Riviera. The sunshine and the ambience of the place eclipsed the clouds of war, and the Nussbaums spent the summer of 1934 together. in what would be Felix's last encounter with his parents. His uplifted mood is expressed in the joyous, carefree colours of his works during this time. And I'm going to show you an example of how um, beautiful his work could be when he uh, wasn't um, being persecuted and he had some time to be free and happy. So this one is called the, the beach at Rapallo. It's a little bit small, but you can see the boats, the sea, the mountains. In 
1935, Felix's parents succumbed to their nostalgia for Germany and expressed their wish to return to their homeland, despite the fierce objections of their son Felix. And so, um, I mean, I think this is um, very important, the, the, the idea of what would it take for you to leave home? What would it take for you to um, have to be a refugee and, and um, you know, the pull of home, that that could be a light in the darkness to return, despite um, whatever atrocities that were being carried out in that place. So Felix and his life partner, Selke Sapek, decided not to return to Germany. Um, they first went to Paris in January 1935 and then to the Belgian resort of Ostend. And several months later, they moved in with friends in Brussels. So there, in October 1937, they married. And Felix's brother, Justus, was forced to emigrate in 1937 when all Jewish businesses in Osnabrück were Aryanized. Justus, his wife, and their two-year-old daughter, Marianne, fled to the Netherlands on 2nd of July of that year. And there, together with several additional forced migrants, he managed to establish another scrap metal company. In the meantime, the situation in Germany was deteriorating. On Kristallnacht, the synagogue in Osnabrück was torched. Jewish homes were looted and all Jewish men were taken to Dachau. And in May 1939, Felix's parents then decided to flee again and leave Germany. They fled to Amsterdam to reunite with Justus, their eldest son. When Belgium and the Netherlands were occupied in May 1940, Felix was arrested in his apartment and, like all other aliens, taken to the St. Cyprien camp in southern France. His internment there was a personal watershed. He fe then Felix comprehended the true extent of the mortal peril as a Jew under Nazi rule, and he did some paintings um, about life at the camp. I'm going to show you a self-portrait um, while in the camp at St. Cyprien, which um, really is just very brutally uh, real, um, kind of sums up the emotion and sums up the hardship um, of living in, in camp, camp at St. Cyprien. Um, his internment there was a personal watershed um, where he comprehended the true extent of mortal peril as a Jew under Nazi rule. And he expressed this epiphany in, in another important work called The Camp Synagogue at San Cyprien from 1941. And that one is a unique work that symbolizes Felix's realization that he belongs to the Jewish people and is so perceived by others. It was his first painting on a Jewish theme in many years. And I'll bring that one up to look at that as well. So this one sums up. Um, the need to continue to worship, you know, the fact that it's called the synagogue and the synagogue is, 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 is the, the bare hut um, sums up, I guess, the light in the darkness that is the, the, the need to continue to worship under difficult circumstances. So in August 1940, in despair after three months of suffering under humiliating conditions at San Cyprien, Felix applied to return to Germany. When he reached the checkpoint at Bordeaux, he decided to escape by boarding a passenger train to Brussels, where he would be reunited with his beloved wife. So an extremely brave and courageous um, person. Um, from 1940 on, Felix Nassau lived in hiding with no source of livelihood. His Belgian friends met his needs and even provided him with a studio and art supplies. So in terms of light in the darkness and sense of community, something that's so important to us, especially in these difficult times, um, currently to um, help people help each other, um, it's a wonderful thing. So lacking residency papers and in continual danger of being discovered, Felix moved from his hideout apartment to his studio and back, pursuing his artistic endeavors without respite. The themes of concern to him were fear, persecution, and the curse that loomed over the family members. He did a lot of self-portraits self at this time, and I'm going to bring some of those up to show you. So this one coming up is called Self-Portrait with Identity Card, um, and really sums up in the, 
expression on his face, a kind of haunted expression um, of constantly having to justify your existence, being, being pursued, being hounded. Um, and then this next one, so this next one is simply called Fear um, and is a picture of him and his niece um, and really again sums up the, the tragedy um, of the situation, the emotion of um, holding on to family, worry about um, you know what's going to happen to your loved ones, um, all in this kind of man-made um, disaster towards the Second World War. So, lacking residency papers and in continual danger of being discovered. Felix moves from his hideout apartment to a studio and back. Um, the fate of the expanded Nassau family was sealed, and in August 1943, the protection given to employees of Justice Nassau's scrap metal business was revoked. So Felix's brother Justice, Justice's wife, and their daughter Marianne, Felix's niece, who was in the picture I just showed you, and the Nussbaum parents were arrested in their hideout apartment and sent to Westerbork. Half a year later, on February 8, 1944, Philip and Rachel Nussbaum, the artist's parents, were deported from Westerbork to Auschwitz. On 20th of July, 1944, Felix and Felka were arrested in their hideout and sent to the Metzelen camp. Later that month, they were also deported to Auschwitz, where Felix Nussbaum was murdered on 9th of August. His older brother, Justus, was transported from Westerbork to Auschwitz on September 3rd, and three days later, Hertha, Felix's sister-in-law, and Marianne, his niece, were also murdered in Auschwitz. In late October 1944, Justus was sent to the Stutthof camp, where he died of exhaustion some two months later, so the whole family were wiped out. A distant cousin did survive. Um, and has been instrumental in pr promoting um, the work of Felix Nussbaum. This chronology manifests the ex extirpation of one family that, despite years of flight, could not escape the long talons of the Nazi beast. Europe had become enemy territory. Nussbaum expressed the motif of dead end in the early work European Vision Refugee, which I'll bring up to you. So this work, the European Vision, the Refugee, uh, shows the Jewish refugee holding his head in his hand, finding no shelter on the threatening globe which stands on the table. The entrance to the room, which is wide open, provides no source of hope either. Symbols of extinction, a tree shedding its leaves and hovering ravens over a corpse lurk outside. Seemingly, the artist already knew the final outcome, that no member of his family would survive the inferno. Felix endured for almost a full decade, against all odds, that he too was murdered a month before the liberation of Brussels. However, his work, con work continued to tell his story, that of his family, and that of the fate of the Jewish people, and the tragic loss of um, such a talented artist. Um, and um, thank you. I hope you enjoyed, um, well, learned something anyway from. Yeah.